Fall of Lahiatsu and good evening. Leading our news bulletin tonight, a three-year-old infant has been reported to have died shortly after being presented to the Nuifo Hospital on Monday morning. The incident has left many on the island stunned and saddened by the loss of such a young life. According to sources close to the family, the young child had been taken to the hospital on several occasions throughout the week. A source at the hospital also says the child was pronounced dead on arrival as parents frantically tried to seek medical help. Our inquiries to the health department to verify accounts of the incident received a response that the department was unable to make any comments into the matter out of respect to the grieving family. BCN understands that the Minister of Health, who is also the acting Premier, Joan Viliamu, has met with the family to convey respectful condolences in this unfortunate incident and discussions have also been held with health staff. Understandably, the family will not be making any comments to the media. Our deepest sympathies go out to the Funaki and Nelisi families for their loss. The laying of bribery and money laundering charges against two former Crafer farm bidders has left the future of multi-million dollar projects in New Zealand and in some Pacific islands in the air, including proposed ventures with the new government. It was revealed on Monday that the Hong Kong Independent Commission Against Corruption had laid several charges against bankrupt businesswoman Mei Wang over business dealings said to have happened in New Zealand while she was trying to buy the dairy farms formerly owned by the Crafer family. Natural dairy founder Tupai Lele Jack Chen has also been charged. He did not turn up to face charges on Monday and a warrant has been issued for his arrest. The charges follow a year-long investigation by the Commission and New Zealand's Serious Fraud Office. The head of the SFO, Adam Feely, told Radio New Zealand's Morning Report it made more sense to us to cooperate with the Hong Kong authorities than to lay any charges here. He said the SFO will still have a lot of involvement in the case. Wang is alleged to have conspired with Tupai Chen when he was an executive director of Natural Dairy and other persons to offer him two properties in Auckland as well as more than $11.9 million if he agreed to acquire her company, UBNZ Assets. The additional charges relate to the alleged laundering of $150 million New Zealand dollars in crime proceeds. Jack Chen and Mei Wang travelled to Niue this year with Brief Director Philip McNichol to gauge the Niue products produce of Nonu, which promised to earn much revenue for the company and Niue. Manager of Nonu Farm, Mr. Mike Doherty, told BCN News Today that the problems with the investors will not affect the Niue operation. Another venture proposed by the investors included 100 Chinese investing $100 million in real estate. That proposal was put on hold during the Pacific Island Leaders Forum in Auckland when it appeared the heat was too hot to continue. We will bring you more on the story in our future news bulletin. A follow-up on a news item we brought to you on Tuesday evening. The newer police have completed their investigation into an incident that occurred on the 22nd of October involving a visiting Canadian tourist and a local resident. As a result of all parties being spoken to, no charges will be laid against any persons. Police are satisfied that the incident was of a minor nature and would like to reassure the community that Niue remains one of the safest destinations to visit in the South Pacific. The Niue police are also thankful to members of the public that assisted them with inquiries and their investigation, particularly to the two young men that assisted in helping the tourist home in the early hours of the morning. Niue is in the process of finalising its Joint Action Plan for Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management with the support of SPREP and SOPAC. Local counterparts on the Island Environment Department said that this is a follow-up of an earlier consultation held this year. 
According to Dr. Neta Tuapilisikosi, she says this plan will enable Niue to develop activities for adaptation and mitigation initiatives that will have benefits for the island. The main benefit, it, 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 it should demonstrate that key sectors are working together. It should demonstrate that um, climate change and disaster risk reduction are moving, uh, uh, working together because most of the um, of the hazard are climate um, uh, oriented. It should demonstrate that the priorities are from has been substantiated from uh, communities and and the and the uh, and existing uh, policies. Now it it it's, it, it should demonstrate that Niue is, is committed to to ensure that their resilience to climate and disaster risk are uh, improved. Stakeholders debated in yesterday's discussions of plans of action to enable communities to be prepared in case of any disasters and also identifying newest priorities. Niue's uh, priorities is to step up, strengthen the uh, adaptation at all levels, uh, and uh, um, very uh, come out of, of uh, importance is the uh, capacity at the community level to uh, adapt to various uh, uh, risks, uh, not only the current climate change, uh, extreme events and variability, but looking at longer term uh, climate change protection. And um, not only that, uh, by the, in the area of climate change mitigation, the opportunity to shift from uh, reliance on imported fuel to look at uh, uh, renewable energy that uh, are readily available in new ways, such as uh, sunlight, the wind, but the challenge in access to technology. So those are the, the things that are being picked up as priority from, from the consultation. In light of recent developments in neighboring islands affected by extreme droughts, Niue also anticipates that a drought mitigation plan will also be developed as part of the joint action plans. Niue currently does not have a national drought mitigation plan. So drought um, um, hazard is uh, addressed in the integrated uh, water resource management. So you're looking at all the, the pressures, the drivers that uh, um, uh, contribute to, to drought in, in terms of um, forecasting and, and, and projection. But not only that, we look at how, uh, what is the demand side and the, de the supply side of, of water. So, so the, the whole uh, making a, a, a drought um, uh, um, uh, having an impact of the trout does not rely only whether there is rain or not. It, all, it depends on a whole lot of, of, of things like looking at uh, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the demand, which I think you could say that there is a small population in, uh, in New Way, but then you're looking at uh, uh, storage to make sure there's enough storage, there's no leakage. You're looking at uh, water um, uh, uh, delivery from the storage to the to the uh, community, to the household, and how um, uh, families and households use the, the, the water. So now it's all a, a combination of things, and, uh, and, and I believe with um, the, the population of, of Niue, um, if water is managed properly, properly then, then the, the, the impact of, of drought won't be that, that, um, that uh, much. Mm. Niue's joint action plan is due to be completed by the end of the year and activities are to be implemented in 2012. A friendly cricket tournament between locals and visiting Niue cricket teams from New Zealand has ended with an expected reciprocal agreement for the near future. The visiting men's team were not expected to have much rest arriving in on Friday and first match with local champions Tuapa the very next day before continuing with the Mkotonga and two national tests against the island's best. However, the visiting team started with a disadvantage, not arriving with a full team, only to be outnumbered and outplayed by the locals. It wasn't the numbers that was questionable, though, but the rules of the game and the implementation of the rules. According to tour leader Simona Nelisi, Cricket tournaments need to follow the established rules rather than those made up. It is not fair and unnecessary to create complexity when tournaments start. Though complications developed with the rules, Mr Nelisi said the visiting teams are pleased that they made the effort of what is hoped to be a continuing sporting relationship between the two sides. Although the visiting team lost all the games, Mr. Ninisi said the main goal was achieved. 
Unfortunately, we were not able to speak to the leader of the women's team for a statement of their performance. And continuing with sports, New Sports Team Body, New Sports Council in Auckland is this week holding dialogues with their local counterpart as a bridge of uniting local sports with those overseas. Mr Harry Mokale from the Executive Committee said the cooperation factor must remain in dialogue that will improve development of all sports, whether based on the island or in New Zealand. He said though New Wayans in New Zealand have the resources, the final decision must come from Niwe for representative consideration and that must be fostered for continued sporting relationships. Mr Mokale, who is the chairperson of ANRI, the Auckland Newit Rugby Association Incorporated, said sporting bodies need to unite to achieve the best results and that also goes to the rugby bodies. At the moment there are two different rugby bodies for Niwayans in Auckland, one NIU, an independent body, and ANRI, who is affiliated to the main sporting body, ANRI. When asked why double standards, Mr Mukale said NRU is overseen by the committee in Niwe. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin next week and have an enjoyable weekend.